Each week, American History TV's Real America features archival films produced by the U.S. government, industry, and educational institutions that take you on a vivid journey into the American past. The top of the world, the Greenland ice cap. For countless ages, it has been a frozen expanse, feared by a man, shunned by animals, a white, cold, empty place. But today, more than ever before, there's been reason to invade this whiteness, to mark and explore it for an urgent military purpose, that of finding a means of transportation across the ice cap by which troops and heavy equipment could travel to potential bases protecting the northern approach to the western hemisphere. In 1952, the Army Transportation Corps organized and sent an expedition across the gigantic ice cap that covers most of Greenland. This is the story of their mission. A principal feature of Greenland is its ice cap, over 800,000 square miles of snow-covered ice, ice that rises to 10,000 feet above sea level. In the narrow coastal belt of northern Greenland, there are possibilities for future military bases of important strategic value. But such bases can only be built and maintained with heavy equipment, which must be brought across the ice by a surface route from Thule. One weather condition that the eye could see for itself was the approach of a blizzard. It would come suddenly. Surface winds would blow up, and whirling snow would be all around the party. Trying to outrun the storm with visibility decreasing, was a strain on the driver. He had to keep close watch on the vehicle ahead. Being lost during an Arctic blizzard is about as dangerous as being lost at sea. When the blizzard proved too much, the convoy would be halted. Vehicles would face into the wind and be so placed that snow drifts building up on their lee side would not block the path of the vehicle and back when the convoy was ready to move out. Big blow. Nothing much to do except play a game of cards. Maybe a few hundred games. Outside, visibility zero, a whiteout. Inside, visibility zero, a blackout. Eventually, and this could mean a few hours or a few days, there are signs that the blizzard is giving up. The sun begins to come through, revealing weasels with a new coat of caked snow. The group waits for mail, for fresh food. Everyone is on the lookout for the plane. Guided by the ground party, it flies at low altitude for a free drop. Gasoline drums splash safely onto the snow. Another run to drop rations. This one was too high and too fast. The result was miles of rations strewn across the snow. Breakfast, lunch and supper as far as the eye could see. The packages had not been able to withstand the impact of a high free drop. Dynamite, separated from its parachute, was important for later seismic work. Little was lost except time. Four hours of policing the ice cap. Subsequent drops were more successful. 